Let's do this. Just so you know, this is very complex, but I'm using a computerized voice in this video to make it easier to understand. Let's do this. In the movie The Avengers Age of Ultron, an entire town gets lifted high into the sky with rockets. A huge blob of dirt, buildings, cars, and people are all floating up in the sky. Tackling the science behind that alone is for another day. In the movie, the town never actually hits the ground. It gains lots of heat as it falls a great distance, but it never hits, as the Avengers stop it. I will not only tell you how hot the meteor-shaped object got during its short-lived fall, but I will tell you just how catastrophic it would be if it did fall from its highest point. So to start off a complicated video, I'll find out how much the city weighs. This will not be entirely accurate, as I don't know the exact dimensions, how many objects were on it, and other tedious things. The city is a hemellipsoidal shape. That means it is a spherical oval, split down the middle. To get the volume of all the rock and dirt, I need to use the formula for the volume of a hemellipsoid. It is 3 pi r1 r2 r3 divided by 2. Radius 1 is half the length of the town, radius 2 is half the width of the town, and radius 3 is half the depth of the town. Using estimated measurements, r1 is 500 feet, or 151.52 meters. r2 is 250 feet, or 75.76 meters. And finally, r3 is 50 feet, or 15. 0.15 meters. Plugging these into our formula and calculating, the answer is a volume of 819,112.33 cubic meters. Keep in mind that is just the dirt and rocky part, and it is just a rough estimation. But a rough estimation is fine, because the answer will be big either way. The estimated average density of the dirt is 2,700 kilograms per cubic meter. So multiplying the density by volume should give us the mass of this city's base in kilograms. 2,700 times 819,112.33 equals 2,211,603,291 kilograms. This means the base of the city is a flabbergasting 4.8 billion pounds, or 2.4 million tons. That is only the base. Now the rest of the objects, including all of the cars, pipes, sewer, buildings, objects, and way way more. The estimation is about 120 million pounds for these, but as I said earlier, the estimations can be off by quite a bit with big numbers, and you'll still receive a huge amount. This puts the city at a grand total of around 2,322,512,382 kilograms. See, not much of a difference, so our whopping 5 billion pound city chunk is floating above the cloud line. How high does it get? Well, they state how the air is thinning out, but it isn't unbreathable. They also pass through a low cloud line. This puts them at their highest, 12,000 feet or 3,600 meters. That is high enough to require terminal velocity. That is when you go so fast, you can't go any faster. We will calculate it, and use it as the final velocity. The equation for terminal velocity is kind of complex, but I'll whiz right through it. It is the square root of 2 times mass times gravity divided by air density times something called the drag coefficient times the cross-sectional area. Gravity has a number, 9.81. The mass has already been calculated at roughly 2.3 billion kilograms. The density of air is 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter. The drag coefficient is a very tricky one, but is yet again a rough estimate, it could be 0.4. But because it's such a big object shouldn't it be more? Probably, but it won't drastically alter our final answer. Finally, the cross-sectional area. It is the oval that made up the hemellipsoid. The formula for it is pi r1 times r2 squared. The first radius is still 151.52, and the second one is 75.76. That gives us the cross-sectional area, 36,044.55 meters squared. Completing the equation for terminal velocity, we can finally calculate it, and the number we will be using as our velocity is, 1622.89 meters per second. Do you know what that means? That means that the chunk of town falling, is going 5800 kilometers per hour, or 3500 miles per hour. That is fast. Now we want to find the force it would hit the ground with, if it had actually completed falling. This equation is a little less intimidating, and all we need is the velocity, mass, and slow down distance. We have mass and velocity, so the slow down distance is the only one remaining. This is how much it settles in after it hits the ground. We'll play it safe and say 8 meters. Having completed the force equation, I can successfully say, that the force hitting the ground upon impact is 339,831,553,895,365 newtons. That probably makes no sense. So basically, the weight it hits the ground with, is more than it would normally weigh, because it was falling. 
so the weight it hits the ground with is around 75 trillion pounds. A little bit more than 5 billion, right? But something else occurs as this thing temporarily was falling in the movie. It caught on fire. The true amount of heat it produced can be calculated using the kinetic energy formula. It's quite similar to our force formula, but the answer is 3 quadrillion joules. Converting it to Celsius, that means that the falling city would have produced 1.6 trillion degrees Celsius, or nearly 3 trillion degrees Fahrenheit. To put that into perspective, the surface of the sun is a pathetic 15 million degrees Celsius, or an imperial, 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. That is one hot rock. I bet it would have burned up falling even without their help. That literally means that it physically couldn't hit with any force, due to the extreme heat burning it up. Just to summarize, the city weighs 2.5 million tons. It would have traveled downward at 5,800 kilometers per hour. It would have hit with a weight of 37.5 billion tons. But all of that doesn't matter, as it would have burnt up before hitting the ground, by producing 1.6 trillion degrees Celsius. Way to waste time Avengers, way to waste time. And shame on Ultron for this pathetic plan.